In this short video, we're going to find the derivative formulas for all the trig functions. We already learned the derivative formula for sine of x. We found that the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. And we can use the same ideas to find the derivative of cosine of x. We will start with the limit definition of the derivative. So I'll take the limit as h goes to 0 of cosine of x plus h minus cosine of x all over h. Then I'll use the sum formula for cosine of x plus h. That will give me cosine x cosine h minus sine of x times sine of h. Then I still have minus cosine of x, and that is all over h. And now I'm going to break this into the difference of two limits. And it may not be clear at first why I do that, but if I look at the first limit, I see I have a common factor of cosine of x. x does not change as h goes to 0, so I'll factor that out in front of the limit. And in the second limit, I see there's a factor of sine of x, which again does not change with h as h goes to 0. So I can factor sine of x in front of the limit. And then I see what's left in the limit are the two important trig limits that we learned about previously. The limit as h goes to 0 of cosine of h minus 1 all over h, that is going to evaluate to 0. And the limit as h goes to 0 of sine of h over h will evaluate to 1. And so I'm only left with minus sine of x. So we have found that the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. Now once we know the derivative of sine and cosine, to find the derivative of the remaining trig functions, we can use the quotient rule. For example, tangent of x is the quotient sine of x over cosine of x. So to find its derivative, we just have to remember the quotient rule and the derivatives for sine of x and cosine x. So we'll take the derivative of the top times the bottom, subtract off the bottom times the derivative, I'm sorry, the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. So the derivative of sine of x will be cosine of x. The derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. And in the bottom, there's no derivative. So it's still just cosine squared of x. Now look what happens in the numerator. I have cosine of x times cosine of x minus sine of x times negative sine of x. That will give me cosine squared x plus sine squared x, which is one of our most important trig identities. Cosine squared x plus sine squared x is just 1. So I get 1 over cosine squared x, which I can simplify to be just secant squared x. So the derivative of tangent of x is secant squared x. Let's use the quotient rule again to find the derivative of secant of x. Secant of x is 1 over cosine of x. So I'll take the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. Now the derivative of a constant is just 0. And so that first term is 0. The derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x, but I'm subtracting that, so that's going to give me a positive. 
And I'm going to break this into the product of two fractions, one over cosine of x times sine of x cosine of x, so that we can simplify it to secant x tangent x. So the derivative of secant x is secant x tangent x. All right, we're starting to see a pattern. So let's see if I can just work this out uh, for a cotangent of x. We'll use the quotient rule again. Cotangent of x has cosine of x on top and sine of x on the bottom. So applying the quotient rule, I would take the derivative of the top times the bottom, subtract off, excuse me, the top times the derivative of the bottom, and that will be all over bottom squared. So derivative of cosine is negative sine And the derivative of sine is just cosine. And we may have to skip the rest of the derivation because my pen has just stopped writing. But in the end, we get the derivative of cotangent of x is minus cosecant squared of x. Let me see if I can get my pen to start working again. All right, let me finish the derivation. So we were going to say that the cosec, the derivative of sine is cosine of x. And that's going to be all over sine squared x. So I can factor out a negative 1, and what's left inside is sine squared x plus cosine squared x, important trig identity, and I'll have sine squared x in the denominator. And so that will equal negative 1 on top over sine squared x, which I will break into negative 1 over sine of x. I'm sorry. Which I'll just write as negative cosecant squared of x. So our derivative of cotangent of x is negative cosecant squared of x. And then the last trig function is cosecant of x. So we call that cosecant of x is 1 over sine of x. So I will have the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. 
So again, derivative of a constant is zero. And so then I'm going to have subtract off the derivative of sine. So the derivative of sine is cosine of x. And on the bottom, sine squared x. And we will write that as negative 1 over sine of x times cosine of x over sine of x, which simplifies to negative cosecant of x cotangent of x. So the derivative of cosecant of x is negative cosecant of x cotangent of x. So here's our table of all the trig functions, which we want to memorize. There are some patterns which are worth looking at. Notice that all of the cofunctions, all of the cofunctions, cosine, cotangent, cosecant, their derivatives are all negative negative sine x for cosine of x, negative cosecant squared of x for cotangent of x, and negative cosecant of x cotangent of x. Notice that you also have the pattern that the derivative of sine is just cosine, and the derivative of cosine is just negative sine. The derivative of tangent and cotangent, they have a squared. In the case of Tangent, it's secant squared x. In the case of cotangent, it's negative, but it's the corresponding cofunction. So it's cosecant squared x, negative cosecant squared x. So if I can remember the derivative of tangent, that should help me remember the derivative of cotangent. I just have to remember that it's going to be a negative, and then I put the co in front of the secant. And the same pattern holds with the derivative of secant of x, which is secant x tangent x, and the derivative of cosecant x. I'm going to have to remember to put the negative and then change the secant to cosecant, the tangent to cotangent. Well, I hope you found this short video on the formulas for the derivatives of the trig functions useful.